Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, Part 50. Drilling and threading the mounting holes in the engine base casting in order to bolt the steam cylinder in place. This series, called How to Build a Model Steam Engine, is for my Patreon supporters only. The full-length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. During the series you've seen me making various parts for this particular steam engine, which of course is a Stuart Victoria. And the time has finally arrived when I can mount some of the parts that I've made on the bed plate. Here's a cylinder assembly that I've already assembled, but I did it wrong. I forgot to put the gasket in place. And the gasket is essential for obvious reasons, it's a gasket, but it's also essential to space the mounting feet so that when I mark out the holes on the bed plate, they will be in the right place. As I fasten this part together, you will notice that the cylinder covers are not held in place by studs. Instead, by using a piece of 7BA studding, chopped to length, with a nut loctited on the end of each of the pieces of studding, they look like studs, but really, they're just bolts. Personally, I find this to be a good idea, and you are fully in control as to how far the nut goes on the stud at all times. This clip doesn't look right, the cylinder is not level. That's because it can only be level when it's placed on the bed plate, because the round bottom of the cylinder makes it roll about on the bench. Here you can clearly see what I'm doing. I've applied some marking out blue to all of the mounting points. And then by holding the cylinder in the correct position, I use a needle file, which is quite sharp and pointy, to scratch the positions of the holes on the bed plate. Once I'd finished marking the cylinder positions, I also marked the position of the main bearing that goes on the bed plate. In an ideal world, this is a zero tolerance job. The clearances on the holes are just enough to clear the bolts. Now it's time to drill the mounting points in the bed plate. First of all, using a center drill. I'm being very careful with this and making sure that the holes I am drilling in the bed plate are exactly in the center of the ring that are scribed on the marking out blue. After centre drilling every one of the holes and making sure that they are all in the right place as I mark them, I've now fitted a 5 seconds of an inch twist drill into the drilling machine chuck and I'm drilling the holes to a depth of 7 sixteenths of an inch, after which I will thread them 2BA. You may be wondering why am I drilling the holes to a depth of 7 sixteenths of an inch? Well, that's what's shown on the drawing. And it will give sufficient clearance for the length of the threaded part of the bolts. Here I'm threading the holes in the bed plate using a 2BA tap. And it's very important to make sure that the tap goes in squarely, and you must monitor this at all times. If the tap doesn't go in squarely, remove it and start again, making sure it is at 90 degrees to the part you're tapping. That's the last hole tapped, now I can move on to the next part of the job. In this clip I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite to remove the marking out blue from the top of the mountings on the bed plate. I'm not cheating here, this is in real time and it's a cylinder and mountings just as I made them and as you can see they fit quite well with a little bit of adjustment. Clearance size for a 2BA bolt is 3 sixteenths of an inch but I used the next imperial size up because I think I will find that I need to make a slight adjustment to align the piston rod once everything starts to be assembled. Each of the cylinder mounting bolts, which once again, just like the bearing bolts, are massively over scale, went all the way down to the bottom of the holes and securely held the cylinder bracket to the bed plate. No filing whatsoever was required. But don't worry, if you do have to file them slightly, this is under the general heading of fitting. I've seen a lot of very well machined engines assembled so badly that they don't work. In case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I've fitted the piston rod, obviously the wrong way around, 
so I can have a look at the alignment of the cylinder relative to the bed plate. My calibrated eye tells me that the piston rod is exactly in the middle of the bed plate, but just to verify that I'm using a steel rule, and when I hold it against each side of the piston rod, it looks exactly the same. Here's a connecting rod that I made earlier, and I've placed this along with the crosshead guides in their approximate position. As you can see in this clip, the other main bearing is also bolted to the bed plate. Once again, I didn't need to use a needle file, and it's a great fit, with no slop at all. You can also see in this clip that I've used a twist drill to support one end of the connecting rod. This job is now moving towards its inevitable conclusion. But that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.